I just ran for 3 minutes and 26 seconds. What I can only get was 1,500 meters. Um, I think it definitely has something to do with what's in the food. I really feel a big difference. I feel thinner, faster. I'm, you know what? Let's see if there's something in the water as well. Definitely not in the water. Um, <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's go uh, check out more of the city, shall we? Uh, this is the Runner Space Rundown. It's the high school rundown. Finally, the late, late portion of the high school season has concluded. With all the high school championships, junior nationals, worlds, and Olympics over, ESPN Rise, formerly DieStat.com, has put together their annual year-end awards for most outstanding performers. In a number of categories based on events, they've selected the top five or so athletes on the boys' and girls' sides. These are the names you've probably heard me mentioning all year long. Check them out. Also, the cross-country season is just around the corner, and Mark Bloom, writer for the Harrier Magazine, has released his preseason top 20 25 team ranking. On the guy's side, he selected Columbus North High School of Columbus, Indiana for number one. Arcadia High School of California is at number two. And Tribuco Hills, also of California, is at number three. On the girls' side, it's projected to be a bit of a repeat of last year, with Fiveville Manlius of New York, who placed first at last year's Nike Cross Nationals, sitting atop the list. And the second ranking goes to last year's NXN runners up, Saratoga Springs, also of New York. And Saugus High School of California rounds out the top three. And lastly, a 17 year old Washingtonian named Oliver Bear Don't Walk. Great name for a runner, by the way, broke the 27-year-old American junior record for the 50K track race. That's 125 laps. And he split the marathon in a 239.57. It is the one and only College Pro Rundown. The Diamond League mayhem continues. This was the 12th stop in London. The men's 100 was won by Tyson Gay, fresh off his victory over Usain Bolt last week. But this week he ran much better, putting up a world-leading 9.78 into a headwind. Another world-leading mark came from the women's 100 hurdles. Canadian Priscilla Lopes-Chalep won with a 12.52. The men's 800 was won by Abubakar Khaki of Sudan and a relatively less than impressive for him, 144.38. Andrew Weeding was in contact and made a bid for the win, but took second with a 
personal best 144.5. He beat out fellow American Nick Simmons, who was third. In the men's 3000, it was Bernard Lagaffe for the win with a 740.3, followed by Britain's 5K 10K champ Mo Farah with a 740.7. Galen Rupp ran a personal best 743 to take fifth. In the women's 1500, Nancy Lingott continued her dominance, winning in a 407. She, oddly enough, for all her wins, has still yet to break four. On day two of this two-day meet, Augustine Chogi won the mile in a personal best 350, and taking third was Leo Manzano, also running a 350 personal best time. And 20-year-old Australian Ryan Gregson ran a personal best 352 for fifth. The women's 800 had six under two minutes. It was won by Russian Maria Savanova in a 158.6. Americans Morgan Usini and Anna Pierce each broke two, taking fourth and sixth respectively. And the world leader, American Alyssa Johnson, was eighth with a two flat. And oh no, Christian Cantwell lost the shot for the first time all year. It was won by fellow American Reese Hoffa. That puts an end to his 20-meet winning streak. The Falmouth Mile in Massachusetts was won by Russell Brown in a 359.6. And he just edged out Kiwi Nick Willis, who was second with a 359.7. That was Willis's first race back from a knee surgery. And lastly, speaking of comebacks, American Mile record holder Alan Webb ran his first race in over a year. He was also coming off of a surgery. The distance was 800 meters and the time was uh, 152.3. It's the Road Racing Rundown. The Cigna Falmouth 7 Mile Road Race was on Sunday in Falmouth, Massachusetts. The men's race ended in an epic two man battle between Ethiopian Gabriel Gabriel Merriam and Kenyan Wilson Chebet. But in the end, it was last week's Beach to Beacon 10K winner Gabriel Gabriel Merriam who came out on top. He won in a sprint to the tape with a 32 20, just edging out Wilson Chebet's 32 21, making it the closest Falmouth Road Race since 1995. Kenyan Martin Lowe was third with a 32 37, and Ed Moran was the first American in and fifth with a 32 40. He took fourth in the previous day's Falmouth Mile. And on the women's side, it was also a Kenyan Ethiopian battle between Kenyan Lineth Chepkarui and Ethiopian Wu Diyalu. Lineth Chepkarui, who also won last week's Beach to Beacon 10K, ran from the front, but was outkicked by Beach to Beacon's second place finisher, Wu Diyalu. So they just switched first and second place this week. Ayalu ran a 35 46, and Chepkarui was four seconds back. Kenyan Edna Kipplegott was third with a 36 31, and Colleen Duruk was the first American in and fifth with a 38 10. And at America's Finest City Half Marathon and debatably America's Finest City, San Diego, California, on the women's side, Ethiopian Belenish Gabriel busted out a huge course record of 110 28, and her boyfriend, Eskia Sese, won on the men's side in a 103 58. And lastly, Samuel Wanjaro has announced that he'll be making an attempt to defend his Chicago Marathon title this fall. Also, he plans to attack the World Marathon record in Berlin, hoping to run a time of 2.02. So, I guess that leaves me with only one thing left to do, and that's buy a Morocco jersey. Because if I get fast here from eating the kebabs and drinking seawater, I gotta look the part. So, um, you guys meet me back at the boat. I'm gonna go try to get, uh, I'm gonna go try to do some dealing in their market here, and, uh, we'll see what I can find. Alright, see you guys in a few. Bob, you gotta eat them. It doesn't help to have a jersey, too. I love you. Bye, Mariah.